Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show and another episode of the White Rose Rivals. Unfortunately, we are one down this week. Uh, Ash couldn't make it, which I'm fuming about because I wanted to gloat because obviously we put Chef Wednesday to the sword. Uh, but it is what it is. I've um, I've dodged uh, many a results, I think, in the past when uh, things haven't gone my way. Or <laughs> things have gone the other lad's way and we've not done a show, so we can forgive him. Um yeah, uh, let's check in how everyone is first and foremost. Cossy, you're back over in the UK. You're glad to be back, mate. Are you missing Spain? I am, but I'm not glad to be back in the bottom three. Uh, I don't think we've been in it this season, to be honest, uh, Joe. But yeah, it was a uh, well, proverbial game of two halves. Maybe not Bournemouth Luton standards uh, from last night. What a game that was, no, wasn't it? I know, so, yeah. yeah. Incredible, Wild, but Wild. yeah, gutted uh, from Sunday. Just chalk and cheese the first and second half, but. Yeah, no, good to be back, Joe, in the rain and the wind. And, uh, yeah, just uh, let's see what the weekend brings. We will have to be talking about this Kevin Nagel dude at some point, mate, because I don't know if you... Well, you will have, <laughs> won't you, this David yeah, David Carmichael yeah, yeah. and Kevin Nagel speaking. What, <laughs> what, what even is that? What show is it from? Like, what yeah. are they doing? Like, yeah. it's mad. <laughs> it is really, really mad. Uh, Matt, I haven't seen you for a bit, mate. Um, do you want to just tell us the story about your beard, mate? Because I found that quite, uh, <laughs> quite amusing. Yeah, so I've, since I last time, I've, I've had a show. I did it on the podcast about October time. When things didn't look so bad, I thought it'd be funny. We haven't won away from home now. I thought, well, I'm not shaving until we win away from home. But we still haven't won away from home. Uh, one of the listeners suggested it might be my beard that was bad luck that was causing Rotherham to be so rubbish. Uh, so we shaved it off in the hope that things improve. We've lost 5 0 twice since I've done that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hashtag bring back the beard. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back. Bring back yeah. the beard. For sure, bring it back. And Anne, you ain't got a game this weekend, mate, but fresh off um, off heroics, I would say, last week when you drew with uh, top of the league, meaning Leeds United are just three points behind them now, mate. So I'm uh, I'm buzzing with you. Yeah, we're we're doing our best to repay you for the um for the favour you did for us when you when you beat Watford and sent us up that time. We're 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 helping you out. Um, much to our own dismay, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it, at least at least it helps our top six hopes, I suppose. But no, yeah, we should have won that game, mate. We should have we should have even done you more of a favour. But you know, here's what it is: championship. It's mad. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, isn't it? I don't know how many points separate the bottom uh, bottom at the minute, but I think at one point it was like, like four or five points. points. I think. Yes, yeah, wild. Mm. It's wild, isn't it? It is absolutely. Joe, there's only one place we're starting, mate. Did you see that Marcus Turan and Deppen uh, incident last night in the Champions League? They, it were like Gazza and Vinny Jones, mate, back in the day. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, I did when he put his. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, it was incredible. What are your thoughts on that? How's that not? How's that not a red? It would have been the weirdest incident ever because Savage went down, but he, he likes to get players play I'm thinking, is he putting it on? And then he shows this replay, and then he's like bannering with him, and then. I, I, if, if that had happened to me, I wouldn't be bannering him with the guys. I'd even knock him out. Well, I'd try, but uh, it was just <laughs> such a football always comes up with these bizarre things, doesn't it? Like and that as well. But just, uh, it just probably, I mean, I'm old enough to remember that Gazza and uh, Billy yeah, Jones back in the day when it Wimbledon, Newcastle. But just people do all to get an advantage now, do you? Maybe that's what we have to do last game. Ipswich, mate, if we need to stay up, we need to be. Uh, Every trick in the book, man. <laughs> I don't think I don't. I, I don't know if Jonathan Hogg has me as the type of guy that will just start uh, touching. He'll just el- elbow them in face, won't he, mate? Let's be honest. That's uh, oh, that's man, more risk. Uh, yeah. Let's listen, Cossy. Let's talk um, about Huddersfield first and foremost, because obviously there has been a bit of back and forth between the fan bases over the last few weeks after the draw. Um, What's going on with this Kevin Nagel? Like, why? I know Huddersfield fans, having spoken to the lads who run your Twitter, they say, well, Leeds fans are talking about Huddersfield more than the other way around and all this sort of stuff. But what's the deal with this Kevin Nagel? Why is he even talking about Leeds United and that? I don't even know who this Carmichael dude is. And he's going, they're doing this yeah. thing like this. Like, what's he on about, man? <laughs> yeah, we were cringe, Joe. You could look at our group chat when that video had yeah. come out and we'd all watched it. We were like, oh my God, why? Why? Because we like the. It's a bit, obviously, we've never had a foreign owner before, so it's a bit of a strange way of doing things. These video diaries just pop up, and you know what? It's good to have communication, but some of the times it is like this, they talk about stuff that this, this shouldn't be. I mean, it's kind of weird telling a, a man who's bought the club how to run the club or what yeah. to do in his Twitter feed, but yeah, I must admit, some of the stuff were good, and then all of a sudden we get onto leads. That David Carmichael is just a friend of him, uh, Joe. It's just really, really almost looks like some kind of 
American podcast, doesn't it? Just like uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. somewhere in that as well. But yeah, I'm just thinking like it's almost like they've got rent free in their heads now, Leeds fans. And uh, he was saying that it's just like, well, why bring it up? And yeah, I get yeah. that. Obviously, to be fair, they started it with the Derby banner, but then when he was saying stuff like, oh, you know, they've still got business to do. What? Hang on a minute, mate. What important for you? Why are we even on about this? And it's just, <laughs> it's just bizarre, isn't it? Because like yeah. you just know every other game now, nine games to they're good at getting. Fired in. I don't know if it's American humor, mate. I just don't know what it is, but it just yeah, uh, it's wild. Yeah, I, yeah. The video daddy were like, I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he did that, and then what is that? I just thought, guys, it's just not the time and the place. It's just exactly. It's just a bit of a strange way of doing things, but that this is what it's like. But yeah, off the back of the, uh, you know, of Sundays, uh, oh, they would have touched it. Soldiers trying to beat that, Joe. I mean, no, I said to last week that West Brom beat other still suppose thinking well, what's what's to say here, just move on, but it was just how it happened, mate, just, mm. we were so good in the first half, they were so bad, to be fair, we played really well, we pressed them right, we didn't leave them have any room, but I said to someone at half time, there's no way West Brom are going to be as bad as that second half, but just to see other Shields just capitulate like that was a bit concerning, mate, it kind of reminded me of too many games this season, obviously, Brighton Wright was new and, you know, come in, we did, we thought them kind of, uh, things were behind us, Johnston just run riot, mate, second half. And uh, mm. obviously, good the player, guys isn't he? really good world player. In. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned I don't get in Celtic team, mate, doesn't it? And that's mm. well, but uh, obviously, they're, they're up there against Celtic. Could have believed that at the start of the season. But no, it's, uh, yeah, it's concerning. The only thing is, though, <laughs> we've got rather away. Just honestly, mate, they're saying Spain every game is like, it seems to be a cup final, but this this is a cup final and after other field. And it's it's scary. I, I hear people saying that if us will don't win, then it's kind of we're one foot in League One, and it's not even for the points, Joe. I think it's just the psycho. Well, it is obviously, but it's like the psychology of it. It's that as well, and and then you, you're thinking is obviously you might have interest in what it says, but it's like you're thinking surely they're going to have to get results sometime. And to be fair, they they play better against some of the better you know better teams, so that it can be there. But all I'm trying to think is like I'm probably asking now, but. When we were, go- I'm trying to think of when we were going down. We were proper doomed, like by January when we were in the Premier League. I used to go to games not being asked as uh, as a fan. I really could care less about keeping X up or Y down or whatever. And you know, having because because we were playing like Man United, Man City, so we, you know, they could do us in some titles. My team were relegated, and I didn't give a toss. And the players kind of didn't buy in the much and stuff. And it was just a complete please rule the season until August to to get me back and of tuned in again. So. I'm kind of hoping Rotherham are in that mode, really, because I think a few weeks ago they were kind of competitive, but it just seems to be now just when you see a late score, they fall down after 40 minutes or and stuff like that. But I'm just be careful in what I'm saying here because just <laughs> there's, there's two two thousand plus other show fans just concerned on Saturday. We're just you know some people say no, oh, we need to win by a few. But honestly, mate, if it comes on someone's backside in, in 89 minutes, that'll do. But it's, it's everything to lose for Huddersfield, not to lose for Rotherham, and yeah, just. Uh, to go into the bottom three of this time of year is not where you want to be. But the fixture runnings that we've had, Joe, the last five, six games, we've had, I think statisticians, statisticians said we've had the hardest run. But it's all right saying that. But yeah, we've got Millwall or Birmingham or we've got Stoke away. It's all right saying these are winnable this, but they've got a... It just psychologically, that last Sunday, I'd, it just felt a lot of damage, mate, coming out the ground. It's like, wow, it, there were people shouting at each other. Their body language were bad. The wheels had come off the score. A bit like what we did to Wednesday, like four goals in about 20 minutes. And yeah, I get their fifth and the fifth for a reason. Got some quality players. And I think the playoffs will be good, like I said last week. But it was just a bit, yeah. Oof. But obviously, rather than on Saturday, you couldn't, <laughs> it sounds really bad. We couldn't ask for a better fixture. But 100%. if we're not walking out of there with three points on Saturday, Joe, then I think, especially with the international break, it's going to be a long mm. week and two weeks. Or all oh, they've got three weeks break, haven't they? I bet the hell they've got a right. Yeah. Week. I bet they're all. Are you going on a tour off somewhere to uh, Abu Dhabi or somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> no, our, our owner's taking um, another. Oh, them fans, yeah. How many fans? He's, he's taking them on another holiday, and another five-star holiday to take him. We're going to play a friendly, I think, against a national oh. team. A weird country. We're playing an international team in a friendly. Oh, God knows. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Wild. Yeah. Wild. He, uh, it's mad. It's mad. I mean, Matt. Obviously, before we dip into to Hoodie's field at the weekend. Mm. Uh, it's been rough on it, mate. And I sort of have to, like, if I was to predict, and I don't mean this in, like, if I, I sort of agree with Cossie in that it almost feels now that Rotherham have down tools a little bit. And yeah. it just now not, because if you look back a few weeks ago, obviously you draw with Ipswich on the, like, 90th minute, don't yeah. you? It's three apiece. Yeah. 
Mm. And then like within seconds, they go get the winner. And then since then, I mean... I mean, you got beat by QPR, which was a must win. Then Wednesday, which was a must win. And then, like you say, recent weeks, 5 0, 5 0. It's I'd, like, it must be brutal for you right now, mate. Are you, are you, I mean, is it just a case of like, get me this league finish now? Like, I just want to start again, kind of vibe. 100%. 100%. Let's just get the season over and done with. Um, like I say, you think against Ipswich, you think you've turned a little bit of a corner. We're not going to win every game, but there's something there against a really, really good team. So, right, we can go into QPR game and we started off decent, um, but then we could lock, consider two, two, two goals, I think, in the second half and we didn't recover. Sheffield Wednesday could have been three or four, to be fair. That was, they, they were much, much better than us, which just pains me to say. Um, and then you go to Coventry, you 5 0 down, five nil down uh, end of game. You go to Norwich, you think it can't be that bad. It can't be as bad as it were last time. I think we're five 0 down after just after half time. <laughs> um, these players aren't playing for Liam Richardson. Yeah. Some, the majority of them are not playing for him. Um, what do you do about way... that, Matt, Matt? In the summer, does he have to then go get another manager again? Because, it, like you say, it's just not working, is it? I think the club has just accepted League One at this point and just sort of said, "Right, you're the guy for us." And I think you know, because we've, we've got loads out of, contract, excuse me, out of contract in the summer. I think there's 12 out of contract plus the three or four loan players. So he's going to have almost a blank canvas to start with. I think he's given everybody a chance that he's at the club to sort of say, right, I think he said in his interview after the Norwich game that nobody can come knock on my door and say I haven't had a chance. And I think that's, that I understand why he's doing that, but that's the reason we're losing 5 0. You know, John Hugel, for example, he don't want to be here. He, he, we want, he's thinking about who's going to, which of the championship teams going to pick him up in. In summer, and, and there's a few other players like that. Some of them are, you know, there's a couple, a couple of players in there that are still caring. That you can see that they're, 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 they're asked about the club. Um, but you're talking probably three quarters of the squad seem don't seem to give a damn. Um, and it shows on the pitch. You know, if we lose on Saturday, they're a club record equaling 10th straight defeat. Um, it's just an absolute shambles. The, the recruitment in the summer, all man for man, is you look at it, say he's a good championship player, he's a decent championship player, but they're all old, they're all on one year contracts. When the going gets tough, they're just an absolute joke. They're just it's just shambles. It's just an absolute shambles. The best players won't be here next season anyway. Um, yeah, just get rid of this season. It's just an absolute write off. Matt, what, what what the weird thing I was seeing today, Liam Richards is off you quotes because like you were saying there, these guys getting played like you will don't want to be there. So I think they, it would put to him like because Chris Wilder said the other week, didn't he? That you know, I might have to look things differently now. I might have to give these kids a go. It's going to be next week. But Richardson's kind of quoted, like, saying he's not it's not the time to sling young guys in in a situation like this. So, which I can kind of get what he's saying. But then I'm thinking, just what you've said there, well, what, what, why keep playing guys who are out of contract or give a shit? It's, it's almost like he was saying there that they're not. he's not really going to give the young ones a go. But it's a really awkward situation, isn't it? Because I've seen it before, like, when us old relegation seasons, you sling young ones in and they don't, they don't mm. do well. And then they kind of disappeared like to lead two and stuff and it's just like but mm. then I'm thinking playing guys who are not going to be there next season not giving the toss for the badge it's like it's a real nightmare situation man isn't it? it is our problem with youth system is we haven't got an under 21s or a B team we've got the under 18s and then the senior setup. so anybody we bring in is like a 17 year old kid and to throw them in if we go 2-0 down on Saturday the place is going to be toxic as hell so to throw a 17 year old kid into that will be completely unfair I mean, away games, I might be tempted, but it's, where it's you know, there's a bit less um, anger because no, none of our fans will appear to watch this shower at a minute. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's not just yeah, two points. The youth system's not very good, and I don't think you know, the, the prospects we have got, I don't want to scar them. You know, if they, if they are good enough to play a bit next season, I don't want them to scar them with, with this absolute shit show of a season. So they hopefully can benefit and, hand, you know, hopefully can find some positive. Uh, positivity from the season, uh, from next season. Sorry, when when they got his, I half think he's hanging some of these players out to dry, and just sort of playing them to show us, show everybody else, not all show, but force them to play essentially, so that they can fans can see it. We can all see who's pulling a shift. We all can all see who's not pulling a shift. Um, uh, maybe he's doing that a little bit. Maybe I don't know. That might be a bit, a bit petty on my side. If that's what I'd probably do. Um, but yeah, it's just 
they're not asked, so why should we be asked? It's that, it's that, it's that kind of vibe at the, at the minute. It's such, it's such a massive turnover of players at Summer and all. Have season card uh, prices come out yet, Matt? They're, they're no. waiting. No. Yeah. no, they'll wait until like May <laughs> to have signed a couple of players in League One, fiddly for League One. <laughs> Um, there'll be yeah. the record sales at some last summer, record season ticket sales, and this is the season. This is what are uh, the season they play. So yeah, mm. shambles. So with all that said, Cossy, does that make you confident or nervous for the weekend if they can like tenth straight defeat, like record breaking? Are you gonna are you gonna deliver that blow? Do you think, Joe? You you come you're thinking now if you if you can't get three points at. I would say Don Valley Stadium. God, how much of a dinosaur's <laughs> made? <laughs> oh, the minute. Daley Thompson's still running around there. With his big <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so many of our fans, Joe, if we can't win there, then we're, we're down, we're done. Neither is going to be true, really, is it? Even if we win, we're not oh, staying no, up. When yeah. we lose, not going down. But I just think psychologically, it's hard to come back from, from that, especially with the international break and that as well. You haven't got a chance on a Tuesday to, to put it right and that as well. But... I think the thing that concerns me a little bit on Saturday, Joe, I think Huddersfield is just a counter-attack team. I don't think they're the team that can take it to anyone. So I, I'm interested to see how it's like going to play out on Saturday. Huddersfield got to go there and win. They've got to be positive. Some of our passing is appalling, Joe. It's like really, really bad. People can't pass five, ten yards and stuff like that as well. West Brom you know, got into all kinds of spaces. It's a pressure game. In. They've got to deliver. They've got to win. And uh, it's, it's just no escape from that as well. You're just going to get everyone around there. I think Atmosphere won't be up too much. Don't let Robert and fans have kind of given it, given it all up. The fans are going to sit there thinking, right, we should win. So I think it's just going to be one of those afternoons where, you know, what's your pitch like? Is that uh, decent? It's not great. Training, no. training ground's been out of, out of service for that. wind up there, Cossie. No, I'm not, honestly. I knew you'd think that, Joe. <laughs> I knew you'd think that. No, there are no <laughs> <laughs> You're not Daniel Fox. <laughs> I know we'll be training on on the home pitch because the way uh, training grounds out of service for another tick to our shit, wow. shit season. Wow. No, no, it's uh, yeah, it's just a huge game and that as well. You don't want to be that bottom three, but honestly, what I'd love to get, I'd love to send Birmingham on down. I hope there's no Birmingham fans listening here, but that'll be <laughs> the be dream ending. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, just uh, yeah, it's. It's going to be a strange one on Saturday, isn't it? Because you've just, like I say, you've got a team who are down and a team that are, you know, wondering if they are going down. So it's just like, yeah, you've just got to get the business done. But it's, yeah, obviously Ben Wilde's going back there, whether they'll start or not, it's another matter. But it's, yeah, I just wonder how psychological, because a lot of people were like, down, last Sunday when we weren't, because obviously at dinner time kickoff, we were having a few drinks after, and the people were up really down. And so people were like, because obviously we lost at Cardiff, and the first half was so promising, and then we just folded. and. It's like, wow, if we don't beat Rotherham, we're down. I'm just saying, well, we're not, are we? But yeah, we are. Mm. So it's like, yeah, people are going to rock up there just expecting the win. But it's good what Matt said there, really, and that as well. It's kind of like people there not asked. And well, honestly, if, if anyone's listening to this, I know it's not a false security, it's trying to lose into, but just any other show fans watching this is like, wow, this is just, if we can't win what he said there, then it's, we'll probably we do deserve to go. But it's, uh, yeah, we'll see. Do you know what, though? Like, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know how you feel. I know, like, I was just saying it almost feels like they're throwing the towel in at this point. But them heavy defeats that have come in recent weeks have all come away from home. They only lost 1-0 to Chef Wednesday. I know Matt said they, they could have lost by more, but we only got a point down down at Rotherham. And I think the New York stadiums are quite a tough place to go. I know the league position might say different, but on their day, and I, I think they can give Huddersfield a game. What do, what do you think going into this? No, yeah, it is a tough. It is a tough place to go to. I mean, the for the first half against us, they were they were great. Um, you know, they 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 strangely decided to sit back and and, and defend it rather than take the game to us uh, and and they let us back into the game. Obviously, but it is obviously their home form would have been their 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 chance at staying in the league. I think, but they've just like you say, they're not even picking up points away. Like they're not getting the odd draw or whatever. They're just they're they're getting absolutely hammered. And when when your goal difference and then your, your, your mentality that goes into coming away from games are as well, it, it, it then starts to affect your home form. And it's just been such a bizarre season in the sense that, like, there's three mini leagues. That you've obviously got, you've got your top four that are all trying to get the title, half the league going for the playoffs. And then from about 14th down, are all trying to stay up. But Rotherham are just kind of in, in, in that little bit at the bottom. But <laughs> yeah. how, how, sheep, how, how, we, we, we plow our own for a. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's how 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 do you how do you inspire your players to 
in, in a situation that let's let's be honest, I mean they've won three games all season. How how as a manager do you convince this side that they can go on some astronomical run and, and stay in the league? You can't, can you? It's no. I, I I I don't know. I, I I just don't know what Richardson is gonna do um, in terms of approaching games. I mean to be fair. You just say go for it. Just go for it every single game. What have you got to lose? Just to just throw everything at it. Put two. Uh, uh, did you do you play with two up front? We have been, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but stick Eves and Hugel up top. You'll be fine there. Eves is good with another man. Save your Eves. He'll keep you up. But it's it, it's one of these, isn't it? It's it's it, mentality wise. That that that's the main part of it. Is 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 getting players motivated and 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 getting them to go out there and work hard for the shirt and remember obviously they're representing the football club and the fans are there paying money to still watch them um because i we we went on an awful run when we got relegated under mccann and literally every game you get into a into a habit almost of turning up to every single game and and just knowing that it's going to be the same as it was the week before and then that 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 feeling and, and that bit of sort of dread on a match day um sort of leaks onto the pitch and then you know it reflects in performances and results so yeah, it's, it's not a nice situation to be in all. No, no, for sure. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm a, it's like, I know you don't want me sympathy, but, like, last season was fucking rough for us in the Premier League. I get it, man, and it's just like, yeah, um, not great. And you are right, you know, they have only won three at home or whatever it is, and that, that doesn't look great, and they are bottom of the home form table. But, you know, if, if you look at the results, they're all quite tied down there, so... I don't think it'll be easy for Huddersfield, but I just think they will win this game. I think um, I'm just going to go one nil. I think it's going to be quite quite tight. It'll be nervy because Huddersfield it's a must win game for them, um, but I do think they will come through it and and probably win one nil. Um, and what's your score prediction, bud? Um, I'm actually going to go one one. I think it's a situation that um, <laughs> Matt's surprise <laughs> face there. <laughs> no, it's. Um, <laughs> It's it's one of them in it where I mean Huddersfield it's 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 how do you respond from from what sounded like quite a disappointing defeat, um, and, and going to a place where, I mean I'd imagine Rotherham will go into the game and just sort of be like well if we're going down we're going to take you with us make life difficult for Huddersfield all the all the pressures on Huddersfield let's be honest so you know if if Rotherham can just make life difficult for them like they have done for a few teams this season then it could be quite an edgy affair and I think it'd be one of those where Rotherham go one nil up. And then Huddersfield do everything they can to try and get back in it and, and end up with an equaliser kind of game. So, yeah, I'm going to go 1-1. i tell you what's weird, Joe. Like, it's like, well, our goal difference is always minus ridiculous and that as well. So, there were people saying on Sunday, I didn't really get like that. got a massive difference to our goal difference now because it's, my, it's minus 19. And it's like, but when you look at everyone else who's down there, there's some horrendous goal differences. So, they were right. And it's just like, I, I didn't really look at it like because minus then again, minus 14, QPR, 15, Stoke. There's, there's some pretty stinking goal. It's 25 Wednesday. It's just like... 47 Rotherham, by the way. Oh, mate. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> This is Matt's last show. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, God. Uh, it's good. Come on, then, Cossie. Did you, did you... I think we'll win 2-0, Joe, but yeah. I don't think it's going to be one for the purists on uh, Saturday, but anything else but a win is... Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard for Brighton out to kind of get it going. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested to see kind of how it's going to play out, to be honest, mate, whether we'll, you know, go for it. Because I don't love them that like an attacking team. Are they really? It's just like, what's going to happen? It might be just one of those where kicks up for like, oh, you do kick it, oh, you kick it. Like, <laughs> but no, but yeah, relying on Silver Thomas or anything good, over the still mate again on Sunday as best man. And yeah, it'll be key to it all. Good stuff. And Matt, do you. Can you finally get a win after? When was your last win, by the way? Boxing Day. Wow. <laughs> and, that, and that was a, a cross that went in by, by accident. Um, who was that in. against? <laughs> Borough. Borough, wow. Okay. We're being against them this season. <laughs> Brilliant. Them every week. Um, it, what I said about starting early, starting well for us for the last couple of weeks is a concern because if we concede one, we concede probably three. Um, our only hope is to kind of stay in the game and make it go long. Um, but yeah, I, I predicted for on, uh, of course, a show 3 0 the Huddersfield. I just think an early goal and then it's it's good night. There you go. Right. There you go then. Huddersfield, three points in the bag. We shall see. Um, no Hull City fixture this week. Uh, obviously, you've you've got three weeks off, as Cossie mentioned earlier, because uh, Coventry are in the cup. But you did get a great point for 
for Leeds we were discussing earlier. What happened in the game? If you do, that Jamie Vardy penalty, I'm not too sure about, by the way. That, no. that, that both, that... both penalties were soft, to be fair, mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say it was a disaster because no, I was, I was quite soft as well. But uh, it's no, it was a cracking game. Really, really good game of football. We prefer, I mean, this is the thing, like when they're on about run-ins and how difficult they are, I'd much rather have the top nine as, as the final nine games of the season than the bottom nine because we play so much better against the sides that actually attack us and try and play. We we, we, we really struggle to break teams down that they're going to sit back and make life difficult for us. And, you know, you, you only have to look at the fact that we've been we've, we've been to Leicester and, and beat them. We beat Southampton at their place. Um, obviously, we held Leeds at home. We, we were due to Leicester again at our place. It's the, the sides that, that really want to take the game to us, we, we like that approach to the game because we've got space to exploit with the dangerous players. And against Leicester, it just felt like one of those games after the disappointing um, draw against Birmingham midweek just beforehand. I mean, we absolutely dominated Birmingham and just couldn't put our chances away. And that's been the story of our season that we create so many chances in games, but we're just so wasteful. Like, you look at our season, we've had such a fantastic season where we're, we're at a point now where we're probably all higher than we expected to be. Um, I mean, pre-January, maybe post-January, the expectations have raised a bit, obviously, but um, we should be higher. And that's just based on the chances that we've had and the games we've thrown away because our our end product is just lacking a bit. And it was a similar story again, Birmingham. We've drawn four games in a row and it, and it's because we're just not killing teams. We don't have the ability to absolutely kill teams off. We always get one or two goals, but the team, the other team are always in it and we have a tendency to give soft goals away. And, and that's that's just what we do. So yeah, no, Leicester's penalty was 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 definitely very soft. Our penalty was very soft, but we responded well. Um, you know, played really well the second half. So Rory, you know, gets a good goal, and you're thinking, right, here we go, kick on for that. Um, and then no, instantly while we're still celebrating the second goal, Jacob Greaves decides to go for a wander after the pitch, leaving a massive gap for Jamie Vardy, who, who promptly takes the opportunity and scores. And 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 that's just you know that's just us to a T. So no, a, frust- a frustrating um, few games, but. But we're still in it, unbeaten in seven, I think it is now, and only one loss in the last ten or something like that. And that was a that was a disappointing loss at home to Swansea. It's at home for mate. We're crap at home at the minute. We're better away. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting. You, will the draws kill you in the end? Do you think from getting into the playoffs? I think so. I think it's. I mean, I I I posted a start. I mean, let me let me get them up again. Here. It's it's the home form that's the issue with us. So at home we've. We've played 19, won seven, drawn seven, lost five, scored 27, conceded 20. But within those 27 scored, they're a- across uh, across four games at home. That's 14 of those goals, which means we scored 13 over the next 15. Wow. So it's just not good enough. We've got to score more. Um, and we just don't seem to kill teams off at home. And it's a shame because, like you say, if our, if our, if our sort of home and away forms were at least matched, we'd probably be fifth. Um, it's, it's, it's the fact that because it's weird because before the four draws we'd actually gone the longest in the league with, without drawing I think it was 17, 18 games without drawing and then we've drawn four in a row so no it's, 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 it's bizarre it's just our inability to kill teams off we've been saying for about three months that you know some team's in for a hammering it's just not <laughs> come it's, not, it's just not come I tell you what's really weird in the division, but why should we say this division is weird? Like I remember th- a few weeks ago, someone said Middlesbrough in the argument for relegation, and then they've won three in a row, three out of their next four at home, and all of a sudden they're back in it. This is what you'd say these days, isn't it? Back in the di- argument, don't you? You don't say they've got a chance of playoffs. Back in the argument, discussion. Look at Sunderland, bro. Look at Sunderland. They've lost like six on the spin, haven't yeah, they? It's just mad. Wild. All of a sudden, Middlesbrough believe again that they could get there, and Norwich seem to be kind stuff out. It's, yeah, it's getting interesting now, isn't it? Up there, yeah. West Brom do seem. Yeah. Stuff like on Sunday when they kind of come back from that, I think, yeah, that, again, it just seems to be one spot. We've said that for weeks, so I mean, that one spot. It's our, it's our yeah. goal difference that's going to hammer us. We're only on plus seven. Um, mm. And uh, thanks to Rotherham's last couple of games, the teams are, <laughs> were in direct <laughs> um, rivalry with the other two spots. They've all just had plus five. So. It's um, basically means 4-1, so we, we gave you your chance as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 to be fair, but, but, but we gifted you a goal and it made it worse than it should have been. But no, it's it's it's... It's got to be. It's, we've just got to find ways of winning games. I mean, missing Liam Delap, I think, has been um, the, the the biggest issue we've had. Because I think if we'd have had the front line that we've got, but you put the lap up there, um, it's a different story. I think we've we've we're probably comfortably in the playoffs at this point. But um, we just struggle to to refill that number nine slot. Like Connolly just can't stay fit. Uh, we brought in that that young Ohio um, on loan who scored the winner at Rotherham, but then 
seems to be drifting in and out of the squad for some reason. Rosini obviously doesn't fancy him for some reason. Um, we keep playing false nines, which is okay, but when you're looking for a natural finisher or a late run into the box, you know, midfielders naturally, like Cavallio and Tufan, they're going to drop deep on the edge of the uh, edge of the area rather than run to the near post. So Billy Sharp's like 38 years old and has got the, the mobility of a, of a fridge at the minute. So, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not really offered us anything since coming. I don't know, even know why we signed him at this point, but um, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit bizarre. I mean, we've got enough quality on the pitch now that we can go into a game and act like I said, we shouldn't really fear anyone in the league at this point with the talent we've got. We should be going into games and going, we can win this game. It's just the decision-making and the finishing at the end uh, of what has been a really, really good phase of playing games just seems to be missing. Mm-hmm. What about Cardiff, Joe? I mean, obviously, they did you an incredible favour last week, but they're on a fire aren't they, at the moment. It's They're at same points as Middlesbrough. It's, you know, they've won half the games, like 16 wins, 16 losses. How can you be getting in players with stuff like that? But... Mate, the championship is just... Even Jürgen Klopp run about other week, wasn't he? Like, yeah, what a he division. Was, yeah, but yeah. the only thing is, some of the games are pretty dire, aren't they? But it's like, I suppose it depends who you're watching, but it is uh, it is crazy, isn't it, and that as well. I it's think, wild. yeah, I think all this... Uh, yeah, they've got it all to do, especially Leeds away coming up soon. Yeah, well, to be honest, Ian, and talk about that decent home f- home form against the top top teams there worried me a little bit. I can't lie. So We're let's... better away. I'd, I'd, I'd much rather be playing Leeds at Ellen Road than Leeds at home at the minute. What and that's with Leeds being unbeaten at Elland Road. <laughs> Just, you are always worried, Joe. I know there's only one team that stopped you winning this year. I can't remember who it is. Anyone got any idea? But, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but Joe, you're always worried, mate. You, honestly, you're on this incredible run. But I mean, we'll come at your game in a minute. But Bill, well, Neil Addis has been piping up, hasn't he? Essence of easy. You can't wait. Yeah. He said it's his fourth. Ex- what's it? I wrote it down here. He says. Apart from West Ham, Palace and Charlton, this is his most excited game and he loves oh, it. Oh, God. He yeah. loves it, man. Honestly, he yeah. absolutely loves it. Yeah. Um, I did a video on my channel yesterday just talking about the rivalry and just my own experiences in it as well. Like, and it's, uh, yeah, a lot of people, it's not a rivalry, blah, 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 but there has been since the two, t- 2000s uh, a little mm. bit of to and fro in between both, but... Yeah, I can't stand Neil Harris as well, played in the games and obviously managed them as well and always <laughs> shit out his results against us. So, yeah, I'm not not his biggest fan. He um, was saying he's got a great record, aren't he? We're proper talking. He doesn't care. He just loves putting that anger in there. See, I've not it? seen any of this, mate. Is yeah. that what he's been saying? Yeah, because yeah. I've got a great record against him. He's just like, but that's the, Neil Harris. And I suppose yeah. they're on a nice little run, Joe, aren't they? And that as well. They've, uh, that must in last four. And I know it's a different... If they score well, first, we'll lose the game, by the way. If they score you're first. always saying this, mate. No, true. <laughs> it's true, though, bro. It is. I can't lie, because... Yeah, it is. But it is. rather than my job, then you know you've got problems, man. <laughs> <laughs> For Good sure. pies, though. I'm looking forward to Saturday's poker. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Good pies. <laughs> Uh, and you mentioned um, Billy Sharp as well. I remember when he went and I said, yeah, I wouldn't mind him. At least. <laughs> For God's God. sake. What a bad take that was. Full of them. Um, I, don't, I just wow. don't, I don't get it. I don't get it, Joe. I, 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 I didn't get it when we signed him. The, 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 the whole premise was that maybe we've signed him to help the players learn to finish, but that's obviously not happened. Um, and then they're saying, oh, well, he's helping the strikers that we've got be better, but... None of the strikers are ours. So there, he's improving somebody else's players, if that's the case. Ohio's on loan. Delap's on loan. Uh, Connolly's contract's up in summer. Uh, so who's he improving? He's, he's helping other clubs instead of ours. But no, nah, I don't get the signing. I mean, he's had... We don't play his style. Like, if, if you're going to sign Billy Sharp, especially at this point in his career, you just want him to be in the box and for the ball to drop to him. But with the style of player that we Rotherham, do... He should have gone Rotherham, minute. He should have gone Rotherham. Yeah, he should have gone Rotherham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'd have been perfect alongside Eves. Um, it's, it's, it, it, we just need him to be in the box but but our number nine has to drop deep and link up play and that's not his style he has to play with his back to goal and that's not Billy Sharp especially not at 38 years old so yeah he's off, he's not offered much he's had a couple of chances across games I think he had a header he probably should have scored against Rotherham that's the last chance I remember him having yeah, he's, he's, he's offered nothing mate Maybe he'll re-sign for Sheffield United when they come down next season. Eh? That might be his, uh, his <laughs> yeah, final yeah, probably. song. Um, yeah. No Wednesday no Wednesday representative this week, but they're away at Ipswich. Um, does anyone give them a chance in that game? I, I, Ipswich obviously finally got Ipswiched, by the way, by, by Cardiff. They went, they scored in the, like, I think it was 70-odd. <laughs> you know, I went in Scarborough last Saturday watching their game, so I got a taxi, I thought, I can't be asked to walk to the stadium, and 
I got a taxi after 90 minutes and 40 odd seconds. So I've gone there and like, God, they've done it again because it was a, a good goal. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Ipswich have done it again. And I couldn't believe it that Tanner saw that championship card. Did he say it? I thought Tanner were a bit knackered. Like, Cardiff 2 were like, well, that's how I did it. So <laughs> Brilliant. How many times that happened though when you miss like yeah. crucial goals? You know, you should never leave early, should you, man? I, I, met, I met up before the Leicester game with um, the final whistle. It was, it was a Leicester creator and, them and a few of them in the pub before the Jack, match. Yeah, um, Jack was in it. Yeah, yeah, Jack. Well, and um, yeah. we were watching the Ipswich game in the pub and uh, we left at 1 0. So on the on the way to the stadium, I was saying to him, I was like, oh, Ipswich have won again. Or we got to the stadium and found out they'd lost 2 1. <laughs> it was mad. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what a result! What a result in terms of the uh, in in terms of like the top four race, if you like. Um, Joe, do you think it? So sorry, butting in. Do you, you know, the thing is, in, in like Premier League, they love staging the games, don't they? So we'll have like Arsenal on a Saturday dinner time, then Man City on a Saturday tea time. So they go, oh, and can they so and so stay in the on on the Sunday? And they're doing it with Championship now, and that's so what. Do you think yeah. like teams are just like that? Good condition, mentally spot on, or do you think that this does? Add a lot of pressure because you've got your I business done. Does. You've got your business done on Friday, but I suppose you could maybe argue, well, I'm going to make pressures on you to kind of get them three points at the start. But then mm. if it's new, you'd won. And do you, yeah. or do you think that's just a load of bollocks? No, at the I, level, like, no, I think of course it impacts it. Of course it impacts it because like it, it, it adds. Because if you think about it after the game as well, right? So I'm just thinking if like when Arsenal played and they beat Brentford and then they're talking to like Martin Odegaard and Hazard after the game, they're all saying like, yeah, yeah, we can just relax now. So the players are aware of it, aren't they? Because yeah. obviously City Liverpool played on the Sunday, and I guess it's the same in this. It's the same in football, right? So, and our, and our game against Blackburn's now been moved as well for Sky. That's been changed. I think more than half of our games have been on fucking TV. So, um, yeah, listen, it's all about the spectacle in it. I I even think they have rescheduled Southampton versus Leicester the week before the final game like the penultimate game and the game was supposed to take you know this friday it was supposed to be tomorrow yeah. and they've rescheduled it just before the penultimate game southampton versus leicester so it's like i'm buzzing because it means they've got to play an extra game right at the end but in terms of what that could mean at that stage of the season it's all for the the camera and the drama and everything yeah. in it man you can't you can't blame sky i mean can you put well obviously everyone sings that song about sky tv yeah. but you can't they, they pay so much money for it, then they should be able to do what they want. I know it pisses the fans off, sorry, my language, like, you know, to shift games to Friday nights, ridiculous travels. But I can kind of, it makes for quite a narrative. I know sometimes they have them days, don't they, where they'll have one at dinner time, yeah, yeah. probably Easter, it'll coming up again. Easter where Friday, like three, good Friday and Easter yeah, all the same. Three, yeah. yeah, and that as well. So, and I, I am sure, you know, you, they just say, oh, well, we don't care, we just get on with the job. But the, the players will have notifications on flash scores for the games that matter won't they? so you're not telling me that like people like Leeds players will have the, maybe they don't but they won't have a notification on Ipswich just to see what's going on Saturday when they're going shopping or doing what they're doing or whatever <laughs> like I just fun. think it's a lot yeah I just think it's a lot of boss when they say we're not bothered about anyone else like I just can't have that I just yeah, you, you must be emotionally entrenched in it as a player and a fan or whatever in that as well and you must know but obviously on Sunday you've got it everyone you'll know what what's happened and trying to get their international break before before everyone shuts down. It'd be nice to get a win. But that's a tricky game, that, Joe. 100%. I'm just looking here now, Cossie, that you've said that, right? So on the 29th, uh, sorry, yeah, on the 29th, which is Good Friday, yeah, Bristol City and Leicester's 12.30. Yeah. Then Southampton, Middlesbrough's 3 o'clock. Then Blackburn, Ipswich is 5.30. Yeah, and then it, Wat the Watford Leeds is 8 o'clock. So, <laughs> the, 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 I didn't know, honestly. I didn't know, but I had a feeling. Yeah, yeah, so... Like they did that, that in League One a few years ago. There were us Wednesday and MK Dons, and they did the same. We were at 12, one were at three, one were at eight, and they just yeah, staggered them all through there. Of course. And obviously, as a fan as well, if you think so, if Leicester drop points and then they drop yeah. points and you get into your game, you're like, oh, my God. So I get it. I do get it. But if they all win, it also has that other effect of like, fuck, we've got to win now. You mm. know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's yeah. Sky Sports leads. That's the one. Uh, Christopher Spofford Chapel has just gifted 20 Just Joe Football Show memberships. Big up to Christopher. If you've got one in the chat, say thanks to him. Thanks, as always, for Christopher for supporting the channel. Make sure you go subscribe to these uh, relative podcasts as well. The link is in the description to each of their uh, channels as well. Does anyone give Chef Wednesday any hope in this going to Portman Road after they were beat against Cardiff? I think they win. Do you? 
I think it suits Wimble when's he got a chance. I think it suits mm. a, a team that you'll always get an opportunity but to score there and yeah. that as well. They can't but... defend, can they? They can't defend. No, but again, pressure's on them, innit? You're playing at, you know, on Sunday, so they know they've got to get the three points on the ball. But their last two games have been insane, you know. I mean, mm. honestly, I don't, even if you, you want to go up, you don't want to go up if you're an Ipswich fan, you've just got to enjoy that ride, haven't you? It's just, that just sums up football, doesn't it? What they had Tuesday night, I'm, I came in last Thursday, what a game, and Joe, you're like, bloody, I can't believe they did what they did against Bristol City. And then, they got Bristol City on there two days after, and it's just like, just that's why we love it, mate, isn't it? Just yeah, chaos, yeah, mate. It's just, just yeah, chaos and that as well. But yeah, I do think Wednesday have got a good chance, mate. And honestly, I want you're gonna have to ask us soon, aren't you? But I, I it wouldn't surprise me if they nicked a draw there or something, two two or something, mate. Two two. I, I just think Ipswich will have too much going forward, but they will probably concede. I'm gonna go three two Ipswich. They'll probably score off a deflected shot from the halfway line or something like that. That seems to be the general. <laughs> Uh, narrative. Um, and what what are you going for, Chef Wednesday Ipswich, mate? Uh, I think Wednesday will give them a good game. I mean, even even losing to Leeds, you know, they were. I think they'd won four of the last five before that, yeah, or something. Yeah. So yeah. they're in decent form, and I think out of the sides down there at the minute, I think they're the most likely to get out of it. Um, you know, if you take away that shocking start they had under um, Cisco, you know, they'd probably be quite clear at the minute. But yeah. Um, no, nah, I just think Ipswich are home this season. They're 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 an animal, aren't they? I think they'll have too much for Wednesday evening in the form they're in. So now nah, I'm going to go for uh, for for Ipswich two 0 I think. Yeah. What what about you, Matt? I'm going to back Wednesday to get a pick up a draw. Uh, I think nerves are going to start setting in very quick. I mean, when we played them, you could tell the fans even went three two that there was nerves around the stadium because it's getting it's getting close now. Obviously, the result last week. Wednesday are annoyingly good at the minute. Um, and I, know, I know they lost three on Friday, but the parts of that game they did really well. So, and Ipswich are much more open at the back than most teams. Yeah, they are. So, yeah, I'll go 2 2. I hope they draw. That would be absolutely unreal ahead of us. Joe, don't you just date international break? It's a good time to have a rant now. Honestly, mate, everything's <laughs> boiling up Premier League. It's brilliant. Championship, it's brilliant. League Warden, it's Derby. It's Derby and. Uh, Bolton this week, isn't it? Isn't it? The, the big game down there. Everyone's buzzing, and it's like we stop for a load of bollocks next week. I Friends. hate it, mate. Do you I know hate what? it, mate. Gossie, I'm looking forward to it. Our lads need a rest, I think. And then when we come back, we've got eight games, like eight cup finals. Like we, Daniel up, and... <laughs> <laughs> we need it, man. Like Somerville and Rutter have been kicked from pillar to post, and they're going to get battered on the weekend off their Millwall ship. Dogs or whatever, yeah, like, um, yeah, yeah so... actually, Gray's getting sorted up of England, isn't it? I thought he were. Is he not Scott? Could he not play for Scotland at all? Yeah, there, he could, so... yeah, yeah, he could. So yeah, they're just but... trying to get him in early, so that maybe, don't... maybe, but him. yeah, he is phenomenal, though. Like, I don't know if, yeah, yeah, yeah he is, he's different gravy, like, I can't lie. Um, yeah, what a player, and he's got a brother, he's got a brother called Harry who's better and is a striker who's 15 in the uh, un- under. 16s or whatever so wow. um watch this space watch this yeah Phil- philogene's got a younger brother playing for tottenham and um yeah. i think around the time he did the roberna at rotherham there was a video circulating online saying yeah all right jaden's good but have you seen this and then there's like his younger yeah. brother like flicking the ball over his head and, and doing absolutely skinning Wild. players for fun as well at tottenham Wild. under under 18s or something this is a mad thing there was a there was one circulating the other week and they couldn't name him because i think this kid was only like 13 but the the, the the ball control in the, and and what he was doing in terms of skills and stuff it's like i don't know how they're doing it now but kids are just getting better from younger like that sort of i don't know movement skills technical ability at that age shouldn't it's just not normal man it's wild so yeah um the games the game's insane and it was some of the players that are coming through um yeah, on Joe, another one mate another one i stood up and clapped a west from goal on the sunday and got abused and yeah. People are saying I, I could never do that, but I, that Yokoglu's goal, mate, it was sensational. Oh, yeah. It was just, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think that's a bit old fashioned, isn't it? Because I am a bit older, but it's like people were like, What are you doing and stuff? It was like, you're almost like I'd had a bet on him and that, but I just, <laughs> I just love a thunder bastard, Joe. I know, I know yeah. it against us, but. It was just sensational. Like it looked even better on that reef. I know it is. Yeah, it's mad. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you forget that you're surrounded by hundreds of people, don't you? Because like, <laughs> yeah. um, like my, my cousin Jacob Greaves got booked against Leicester, and he got up and went yes because he'd won his bet, and everyone was oh, looking no. at him like, why are you, why are you cheering that Greaves got booked? It's weird. Wow. Uh, wow. Can't be a good song, what what man. what number goal was it, Cossie? I've seen the goal. I've seen it on second tier, but I don't know what number it was. 
it was the third mate. It was like the dagger. It was like just when we're kind of thinking, can we come back? No, we can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Fuck it. Uh, but, but you that. know what? Then I mean, they were saying that there was there was some stats and that people don't shoot like they used to like in modern football. They because people trying to walk it in and passing moves and this that and the other. It's it's just you don't see as many of them. I don't think now, but. No. Like he's a good player him as well, that OK Yukoslu. I like him. I think he's yeah. decent for this level, for sure. Yeah. Um, he could do a job in the Premier League while we're end, I think, I would say. There's quite a few in that West Brom. So I never liked that Jed Wallace when he was at Millwall, but I think he's different gravy, yeah. man. I yeah, when he's on it. Yeah, yeah when he's on it. Yeah, he's really good. I said to me, mates after the Huddersfield game, that um, if, if, if Huddersfield go down, we'd, we'd take Sober Thomas. I'd have him. Ooh, right, okay. It's good. It's good this season. I thought that I, think, I, I, I feel like right, he kind of he kind of vanished for a bit, didn't he? he? Had a really good season under Corbin, and then he he kind of like phased out a bit. But this season it's he seems. Yeah, period. yeah, he went to Blackburn to learn, yeah. didn't he? And then yeah, um, they, I thought he was sort of sort of days were done. You know what though, Joe? It's Bergsdorf was just summed up last week, mate. He scored a good, got a nice goal actually in that as well. A nice finish with his wrong foot, and then when when uh, they'd equalised uh, West Brom, we had he were through, mate. With a cock up at the back and. He fluffed his lines, mate. He should have like chipped the keeper. He was one on one, and he didn't do it. But this is the thing, and unfortunately, this is why they're other still, mate. Because if they could do everything right, they won't be there, and they'd still, yeah, still be true. playing German, Germany Bundesliga. So you got to take it up with a smooth thing, mate. But I, I always like, I always will back people who have a go, like Thomas or a Bergsorg, who will try and mix stuff up, and rather than someone who just square the ball or pass it back, and then they kind of go into the shell, mate. But yeah. obviously, them are the players that seem to get targeted a bit. In I think, I think Thomas, so, Thomas and Rodoni, I think they're they're they're. Really, really good. I think they'll both probably go to the championship if you did end up going down anyway. Yeah. Don't be saying you're going down. I don't like it in these times. <laughs> I said if. Yo, I said if. Yeah. Mate, you good, said good player that Do you know, do you know what? I, um, I actually, um, if, if, if you'd have asked me a few weeks ago, I really wanted Huddersfield to go down just because whenever I go to Huddersfield away, we always <laughs> lose. But we won this year. My, it's my first ever Huddersfield away win. Honestly, <laughs> I, I, I got so drunk that night. So drunk. <laughs> Jacob grieves you, hero. <laughs> yeah, you, have to, to... you have to get pissed, mate, to walk through that town centre. I've got, really, I've got like, right, a, I've got like a five percent <laughs> win rate at the John Smith Stadium. <laughs> Love that. Love it. <laughs> I had to, my mum was in the hospital actually uh, over in Huddersfield not too long ago, and had to walk through. Um, yeah. Not a nice place. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> You'll get Kevin Nagel on you, mate. I know, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. That Joe Wayman. Is... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> let's, um, let's move on to, uh, on to Sunday's game then. Leeds United actually have a chance, lads, if we win by two goals to go into the international break top of the league. I know Leicester will have a game in hand because of their cup game, but Look, I know you. I know Leeds aren't your uh, your favourite team to say the least. But considering the turnaround, where we were, how far the gap was, if we were to go into the international break sitting top of the tree for at least ten days, it really. I just have to take my hats off to Daniel Farker with the job that he's done. He's told Leeds United fans throughout, wait to game forty. I'll look at the table when there's six games left. Well, because of Leicester's rescheduling. If we win, then we'll we'll be top of the league. So it's almost like he's predicted this shit. Do you know what I mean? He's like, I've mm. been there, I've done it, I've wore the t shirt, and um, yeah, like I mean, Millwall won't be easy. It won't be just because of the way they play and like you say, Neil good Harris. As well. Yeah, yeah, Neil Harris will have them well up for it as well. Trust me. So, Joe, just before yeah. I go on the thing, I I just I mean, it's not going to go down well in other this, but I'm going to say because I always say what I feel, but. How they handled that notal situation, mate, and how they've handled everything this year has been immense, you know, like yeah. off the pitch. It's normally a circus at Leeds, and it was yeah. interesting reading that Sinistieri thing today, and that as well. He was sold, obviously, because they needed to come under the, uh, what's it called, FF, whatever, and that as well. So that were kind of, they've, he's been very quiet kind of off the pitch, where normally, yeah. I mean, obviously, you've had some bonkers owners and stuff. I don't know, everything seems to be run right, and it's a calm ship, and like, in fact, we trust it's, <clears throat> obviously, everyone else is wanting, like, it all to go Pete yeah. on, but you, it's, I think when you've got that settled and you've got such a good squad as well, Joe, it's like that can't be easy keeping people happy. I mean, how much times a pamper on a bench pre Christmas yeah. and, and yeah. stuff and that as well. You've got a it's just not as easy sometimes when you've got guys who feel they should be playing. So I think that kind of thing has, has been handled really well. And and then again, God, I, I think I'll get absolutely lynched when right I'm back in Unsfield. But like then obviously you lost to Preston and after that dodgy Christmas, but then you just fly back the other wins. Wrong, it? Yeah, Preston so you've had your you've had your kind of moments where it could have gone off and yeah, but they, I think this is a tricky game, this, and 
Yeah. And as much as I want to watch Man United Liverpool, I don't think that might be my choice of game on there when on Sunday <laughs> afternoon. This would be this would be good, man. Especially if <laughs> Millwall get the first mate, I tell you. But like the the mad thing is with Leeds United, we just don't concede at the minute. We've we've conceded three goals this year and none of them have been from open play. They've all been from set pieces, drop downs in a set piece or whatever. I just think at the back, Ampadu and Rodon with Gruyev and Kamara in front, it's it's just too solid. I think I think at this stage and and I, look the only the only hope I would say the rest of the league have is if uh, if the Welsh boys get injured when they because Wales play Finland, so Kamara mm. goes up against Ampadu and Rodon and Co uh, in their in their play in their like Euro playoff, but. Yeah, I just think they're just too, too strong. I mean, to to not concede a goal from open play in the championship in twelve games is is insane. I think because this division's wild. So, um, yeah. But set pieces, Millwall will be living off that, won't they? That's their bread and butter. So, uh, I'd imagine they'll be time wasting from minute one, um, looking for free kicks, big lumps into the box, all that sort of stuff. But if we can get an early goal, then yeah. Love it. I'd love nothing more than us to batter Millwall at home as well. Because we battered them down there. But I just think now that Neil Harris is there, I really want to put them to the sword. Like, I can't lie. It's, uh, yeah. But, boys, do you... Obviously, now, Leicester are on a, a wobble. Yeah, it's well and truly a wobble now. One win, in, uh, one win in five. Do you think they need to start... Like, before, like, you could argue, oh, could Leeds nick the title off them, right? But now, do you think... If they're not careful, they might drop out of the top two. Does anyone does anyone agree with that? No, I do. I I I've said this um for a while. I, I think that Leicester were at a point where because I think it's like that reverse mentality thing. So they were cruising for so long that they got comfortable and then because the sides behind them, your Ipswich, your Southampton and, and, and Leeds just kept winning games, that at some point the Leicester players would have been like how is this happening? How 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 do they how are they keeping up with the, the the wins that we're doing? And that pressure, as you get towards the end of the season, starts to get to them. And I think that pressure has got to Leicester. And that they, because I mean, I I wasn't when when they played us, I, I I didn't look at they they looked like they didn't want to take risks. They they were happy for a draw against us. Um, and that's not a side that should be going for the title. They should be disappointed that they come away from a game with a point there that they were they were happy. And I think that it's got to a point now where, because obviously Enzo Mareska is a new manager, he's not probably experienced as much in the league as he'd want to. Someone like Farker, um, he, he's got, to, he's, he's really got to try and test his mettle as a manager now and, and get Leicester sailing again. Whereas you look at the former Leeds and you think, you know, if you're a, if you're a Leicester player and you're looking at Leeds' form, you're thinking bloody hell, um, especially after how they beat you. Um, uh, how do you how, how how you beat them at their well, ground? That, I mean, you know, before your that game, man, as well, like because it got clipped up to death. Enzo was in the presser and they said, "Oh, it's such a big game," and he were like, "No, not for us. It's not for them. It's a yeah, big yeah. Game. It's yeah. not a bit." And now look like and yeah. and <laughs> Leicester fans because say, oh, it was taken out of context or whatever. But our club media, the first thing Ampadu said as he walked off the pitch past the camera was, "Oh, such a big game for us." So all Enzo did then was just feed the mm. players, feed Farker. Yeah. And, you know, it's that's that experience that you're talking about. Where Pressure again. Been it. Yeah. And you're right there because Fat's got the promote. He's got the championship, you know, uh, promotion in his CV, yeah. mate. And yeah. there's nothing you can't beat that, mate. As you've seen, like over the years, maybe not we have a but like we won. Because when you've got that in the bank, when yeah. you know what you need to do with the players, you believe in it. And yeah, I think uh, it just reminds me. Of something I know it's, it's Cheltenham Festival week. So it reminds me of an horse that's had a massive lead in a race, and all of a sudden it's like. You're thinking they're going to get like caught, and then sometimes these horses need a bit of company, though, don't they, to kind of go again? And I just yeah, wondered true, after true. international break whether that'll happen. But yeah, I think I think it's a big one, Joe, for that kind of how that'll end up, you know, title yeah. because if you can get past them and that as well, all of a sudden it's like they Different come back pressure, from international it, break. Jason. It's like shit, yeah, we're yeah. going to have to get on with it now and, and start winning. But yeah. the only thing with Moresca is, I mean, again, I, I feel like bad poking because he were like, "What a job is doing," and I know. I'm a big Spanish football fan, so Guillaume Balaguer is like all over him. I think they must be good friends. And there's like an evening with Enzo Moresca coming up soon. It was almost like Balaguer were like, look, you know, Moresca, Leicester are up the and they're going to get 10 points and all that. Exactly the next pep. And I was kind of thinking, mate, you just, you kind of setting him up for the folly. I know he's doing a good job, but he's not won yet. And, and the other team's like are winning. And it's just, 
I don't know, it just feels really strange. Yeah. It would be I've some actually... fall off, wouldn't it, if they were to lose, like drop out. Oh, oh, massive ball. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to think who, who, who could compare that when you've had the lead. They're like 14, and... 15 points clear at some point, weren't they? Seven, nearly 17, yeah, 17. Who, I think who's done that before? Can you remember that? I'm trying to I think, think anybody that's done that. Didn't Wolf? No. I'm talking a bit. I'm sure maybe Wolves were doing it and West Brom picks in one year when. I know, I know, second tier months ago when Ipswich and Southampton were in second and third said that no one with this many points at this stage had never not gone up automatically. So the mm. fact that Leicester were way above them, you'd imagine no one's mm. been that far in mm. front and lost like the title probably. But yeah, um, it would be wild. But like you say, if we win on the weekend by two goals, we go top. And I just think like you've said, Cossie, it's like, it must be thinking, fecking hell, what do we have to do? It's like when Southampton went 23, 24 games unbeaten and we're in third. That's like wild. Yeah. It's unheard of. So yeah. it'll go one or two ways, though, won't it? It'll either go right. We're back on it, boys, yeah. and then they're going to win the rest of the games, or they're going to properly crumble and finish fourth. Yeah. It's, it, this international break for them has probably come at a really good time. Yeah, I agree. Probably have a reset, maybe go away for whatever, and then yeah. get back in. For that, that's just it. There could be a twenty-five point gap between third and six in, in a playoff spot in a playoff game, and it's not going to matter one bit, is it? When you're like, got, yeah, what is it? I'm West, West, West Brom actually closer to the bottom three than they are the top two <laughs> in fifth. <laughs> 16 behind Man. Leeds West Brom, and yeah, the yeah, the, the 15 behind us. So, wow. so, yeah. <laughs> I'm convinced West Brom win the playoffs yeah. anyway. I think West Brom and Carlos Corbran will do the playoffs. So, yeah, he's a proper, they're a really hard team to beat, are these? Just he, he's a proper one game over one game, like tactically. I think he's great. Yeah, really. well, he just showed really on good. Sunday how it changed it, Joe. Just like yeah. I don't think it's just a matter of bollocking him and just yeah, yeah, things changing. We're, we're overloading like out wide, and you've got so many good wide players there. It's yeah, yeah let's put it so no one would want to face him. And I think yeah. obviously it's going to be such an exhausting battle for this second spot. Well, you think so, don't you? Maybe if we still win again at the would it switch or the playing Chef Wednesday out, so see, Chef Wednesday, yeah. Uh... I, I honestly if, think, like, uh, Leicester come back off international break and have to go away to Bristol City. They've got to play Coventry. They've got to play Southampton. I don't think I don't think they've got an easy run in Leicester at all, me. So I'd, I, I could see them dropping out. But like you say, the international break might come at the right time. But Leeds are going up as fucking champions. That's what's happening. For what it's worth, I actually agree. I actually agree. I think Leeds, Ipswich as a top two is a real possibility. It'd be amazing. Yeah, what is going on here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it would, it would be, yeah, uh, it would. Be We're all going to be disowned, aren't we, by our fans? <laughs> We're going to be labelled <laughs> lead sympathisers. Next season, just your football shoulders filled in rubber and a relegated at all. But we're just you two in the Premier League, we'll work on that as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a we'll have a breakaway one, you know, like Super League or what have you. One or two of errors, I'll get us. Go, on, Matt. We'll get a yeah. We'll yeah. get the backer, of mate. Get a big sponsor. Yeah. Do us go alone, mate. <laughs> Come on then, let's get some score predictions for this. I do think it'll be tight. I'm going to go for 2 1. I think they'll score late on to make it nervy, but we'll see it out. 2 1. Uh, Cossie? Joe, I'm going to get Lynch back. Don't, man, because when you. Yeah, if you predict a draw, we'll draw. I know for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> predict a draw and Somerville and Rutter to be injured for us, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna actually, but I think I'm gonna nick yours, Joe. I think I think two one and as well. But you know what? I think all Leeds fans will go there Sunday, knowing they, they won't think it's gonna be an easy win. This because no, you, yeah. you do. Yeah, even if Millwall had lost the last, obviously not on a rather run, but if they were in stinking form, you'd think well it's Leeds and Neil Harris. But the fact that they, you know, they'll be they'll be battle hard, and especially we, they were run the bad and that as well. So, but I think yeah, Leeds are gonna sneak it sneak through and that as well. I think it'd be a good game. This good man, good man, and. Um, I'm 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 strangely a lot more optimistic than you are, Joe. I think at home, I think you you you, you tonked him at their place. So I think um, yeah. I think you'll have him at yours as well. I think I'm going to go three one leads. Love that, love that. I take that every day of the week, Matt. <laughs> Long, Matt. Get an angry day, in, Matt. <laughs> I could tune a leads. I think I think it'll be close. I think there were two late goals. Um, but yeah, I think I think I think it's still have enough, especially at home. Yeah. Yeah, Bamford fly. Reverse down. psychology. We're doing over overconfidence yeah, 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 yeah. leads. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we've done well, haven't we? Today we've only got two games to talk about. It's like uh, we've done an hour and that as well. To be it's honest, it's like match at day, it when half the games are cancelled and like they're just about, like goals in a month for like A to Z on them. What have you? No, I did an introduction and looked at time and thought, fucking hell, it's fifteen minutes. We're gonna be here. Eight. Like, what we're we gonna do? 
but nah, it's uh, it's great to chat as always. Like Stephen says, banter on here is brilliant. I'll never miss it. Great to see you as well. I haven't had someone message me saying uh, the other day, can you please put it in its own playlist? Because I like to catch up on them all. Uh, that was I forget her name now. She'll probably be watching, obviously. So I did that for her as well. So there you Most go. Most of a drink. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Smack, but, uh, is there yeah. um is there anything you lads want to push at all? I know uh Chef Wednesday had that egg thing last week, didn't they, for Easter? But mm. is there anything podcast wise or anything you want to push at all? No. Nothing no, podcast wise. No. I'm 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 doing a mental health walk, um sixty two okay. miles I've got to do this month for uh campaign against living miserably uh charity. Um cool. so yeah. Is it on your Twitter, bro? Hiring. It's um I've put it out on my Twitter, but the the the, the whole f- the whole fundraiser has been done through Facebook. So yeah, if you want to donate, you've got to do it through Facebook. It's a bit bizarre, but I can get the link for it if if anyone yeah, did want to donate. Man. Get the link. Yeah, I think we've raised one hundred and forty six quid at the minute. So um the target's two hundred by the end of the month. So let's see if we can smash that. Yeah, yeah, get that done. Um, that reminds me as well. I'm doing um tomorrow for Leeds Mind. This weekend, from the 15th to the 17th, they're doing get-together for gaming. So it's just streaming on Twitch, playing games and donating to Leeds Mind. So um, I'll be doing that. I don't know what times yet, folks. I just said I'd jump on for a couple of hours each day. So, um, yeah, look out on the socials for that. And if you can donate, please do. Um, So, yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks, as always, for watching, folks. Uh, There'll be no show next week. It's the international break, of course. Gutted that Calvin's been dropped, but understand it i want him brought home brought home first signing when we <laughs> get back to the premier league um but yeah uh that's it i'll stop rambling now there will be a video out at nine o'clock actually a pre-record so if you're stuck for something to watch watch that and uh, we'll see you when we return bye-bye folks <laughs>